What's up guys, my name is Takiya. I'm an orthodontic assistant, and today I'm going to tell you guys how to become a faster orthodontic assistant. I have previously recorded how to become a faster dental assistant, but in this video I will give specifics on orthodontic procedures and how to become faster as an orthodontic assistant. I do orthodontic and dental videos every Tuesday, and I also do content with my family every Friday. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on new content. All right, let's go. So initially in orthodontics, as an orthodontic assistant, we do 90% of the work and the doctor basically will tell us what to do and they will either be there before the appointment and after the appointment or vice versa, just either before or at the end. So you're with that patient 90% of the time and you're doing most of the work. So all of the responsibility is up to you in what time the patient leaves the chair, how long the patient's sitting there is ultimately up to you. So normally in orthodontics, we do have timed appointments. I have previously worked for two different practices and at each practice, we did have different times and we were timed and we were we were required to watch our time. Um, it was fine if we went over time every now and then, but if we consistently was going over time and the doctor noticed that we were really slow, that's something that would be mentioned in our review and we would be asked to watch our time and to try to work on that. You first get hired on, this can be really overwhelming so you're not going to necessarily do each procedure pretty quickly and you're only going to get quick with practice. So as an orthodontic assistant, I would tell any other orthodontic assistant, you're only going to get faster with practicing. So on your downtime, when you're slow, go ahead and just volunteer to work on more patients even if you've just got finished with the, working on a patient. I also will just recommend you guys to shadow other orthodontic assistants because everybody does things differently and there's always different techniques and different instruments you can use to get the same procedure done. So I will always recommend just shadowing other assistants, seeing how they do things because you may find that their way is much quicker than your way. Hopefully after watching this video, you guys will get tips on how to become faster and just how to watch your time when working. The first thing that I always say and I always recommend before calling the patient back, you want to open the patient's chart and you want to read the patient's chart. You want to make sure that you don't miss over anything major like if the patient potentially may need a private treatment room, you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss any allergies and you also want to read over the patient's chart so you can know what you'll be doing for this appointment. So for example, if I open one patient's chart and it says they're allergic to latex, they started rubber bands last visit, we're going to do new wires. Once I see that, I will go ahead and set up for that patient, which brings me to the next step. After you read the patient's chart, you want to set up. So with that example that it was given, I will look and see what size rubber bands that they're wearing. I will go ahead and grab those rubber bands. I will see what wires they're in and I will grab the next wire that they will need for this visit. And then I will also make sure that I have, say if they're allergic to latex, I will make sure I have non-latex items. If they need a private treatment room, I will make sure I have a private treatment room available. Once I set up for the patient, I will call the patient back. Once I call the patient back, the first thing you want to do when you get the patient in the chair, you want to ask the patient, if they have any concerns or any questions for the doctor today. If they say yes, they have concerns and questions, you want to ask what they are and write them in the chart. Once you get that done, say for example, if you have any concerns that is something major, the doctor is to know right away, I will quickly walk away and let the doctor know those concerns so the doctor just has a heads up and has time to prep for that question and give answers to the patient. So that just gives the doctor time instead of having to do that on the spot and wasting more time that's not needed. The next thing you want to do as an orthodontic assistant, you want to immediately 
untie the patient that just means take all of the colors off you want to make sure you do this first because when untying the patient you're checking for any broken brackets so if you do have anything that's potentially broken after you untie the patient you want to set up in order to get that bracket placed so typically in my office, um, we can go ahead and move forward and set up if a patient's bracket is off. Depending on where you work, you may immediately call the doctor to the chair and let the doctor know and then set up to get that bracket on. But if you do have the responsibility to go ahead to move forward, definitely go ahead and move forward because this will save a lot of time. So with this patient, if they did have a bracket off, I will go ahead and set up to get the bracket placed back on and also have the new wires set up. You then want to call the doctor to the chair. Once the doctor is called to the chair, you will then present everything to the doctor. You will let the doctor know that, hey, we had a bracket off. We're going to go ahead and get this bracket placed. The doctor will place the bracket back on the tooth. The doctor will then address the patient's questions or concerns. If the patient doesn't have any broken brackets, you want to just go ahead and move forward and place the new wires in with the new colors. Once you call the doctor over, the doctor is then addressing the patient's questions and concerns and also checking the alignment of the teeth, checking the new wires to make sure that everything is good. That's pretty simple with adjustments. You just want to make sure you go ahead and prep if they have broken brackets. You want to make sure you already have the wires that you want to use for this appointment and you want to make sure you ask the questions before the doctor gets there. And again, you want to make sure you read over the chart before you get the patient placed in the chair. If you have a bonding appointment where you're bonding braces, before you get the patient back or when reading over the chart, you're going to make sure you recognize what teeth you're bonding. If you work at a practice where they don't specify what you're going to bond before you get the patient back in the chart, you will call the patient back and then look at the patient's mouth and see what you need to bond prior to starting. So, if you have to look at the patient's mouth before you bond, you will look at the patient's mouth after you call them back, then set up the brackets. But if it's already written in the chart, go ahead and set up the brackets before you call the patient back. And when you're removing braces, you want to follow the same tips that I've given before. If you have a debond appointment and say you're, you work at a practice where you make the retainers, you take the glue off and you do everything at the debond appointment, which is what I currently do now. It's really important in that after you take the glue off, you want to go ahead and take the impression and pour up the model and let that set up. So while that's setting up, you can do other things like pictures, rays, and you can get the doctor back to check. While the doctor's at the chair checking everything, I will be in the lab finishing my patient's retainer. So while we're both getting that done, by the time, maybe if, doctor is done with the patient by the time the doctor is done with the patient I'm then walking in to the room with my patient's retainers instead of having the patient wait on the retainers so that's really important you can get the retainers done while the doctor's in the chair talking to the patient about any concerns you also say if you have multiple assistants or a sterilization person Usually, if you have a group of assistants, they're all willing to work together. So if the other assistant's not busy with the patient, I would typically just recommend asking one of the assistants to take pictures or an x-ray for you while you're making retainers or vice versa. In doing that, you do save a lot of time. At my practice, we are helping each other all the time. So whenever one of the assistants has a long appointment, like a deep on appointment, we'll have an assistant help out and take pictures and x-rays while that assistant is making retainers. So that is one thing I wanna stress. If you can just work together with the other assistants, 
talk with the other assistants, you know, become a family because you guys are going to be with each other 24 seven. You guys are working every day with each other. So that helps the office a lot as a whole when you guys work together. And it's also going to help you out also. We typically have another appointment, which are retainer checks. Those are typically self-explanatory in our appointments. So you would just basically follow the same tips, read over the patient chart, set up. Um, at my office, we do make our clear retainers. So I say put if my retainer check that I called back has a cracked retainer or a missing retainer, before calling the doctor back, I will go ahead and set up to make the patient a new retainer. So at my office, we take impressions, report models, and make the retainers that way. So if my patient needs a new retainer, I will go ahead and get an impression, pour up the model, and then I will call the doctor over. So at the time when the doctor's called to my chair and when the doctor's speaking to the patient, my model in the lab is getting set up and I'm not wasting time. So I'm killing two birds in one stone. While the doctor is talking to the patient and addressing the patient's concerns, my model in the lab is getting set up for my patient's retainer. So if you have that leeway with retainer checks, go ahead and start making retainers before calling the doctor over because as you start working for like months and you start getting accustomed to what's gonna follow next in orthodontics, you know that you can just go ahead and set up for that next step. And then if you could potentially start working on things and doing the appointment before the doctor is called that will be great and then if the doctor wants you to do something different or anything additional to what was already done you can do that but you save yourself time by doing what's needed before the doctor is called over if you have to wait for the doctor to be called over in order to start because i know at my first practice i did have to wait just to make sure you're quickly getting the patient back quickly reading that chart and quickly getting set up and then calling the doctor to the chair right away so you can get started. You don't want to get the doctor to the chair too late if you have to wait for the doctor to get started. Also, if you guys don't get a review, I will always just ask your supervisor for a review so you can have that constructive criticism and you can know what to work on and how to better your craft. You're only going to get better when knowing what your flaws are and knowing what to work on. In doing all of that, you become a better and a faster orthodontic assistant. Thank you so much for watching this video. This was just my intake and my tips. If you're an orthodontic assistant and you have any additional tips, go ahead and comment down below so you can help anybody else who needs help. If you have questions, go ahead and comment your questions like this video and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.